Welcome to our condensed, microwavable, ready-made resume of the Lady with the Lamp, Florence Nightingale. She was English, born into an upper-class family in 1820 in, the clue is in the name, Florence, Italy. Girls didn't get to go to school back then, but Florence was lucky. Her dad was a modern-minded man. He thought women should do more than just needlework. He homeschooled Florence and her sister in history, maths, Italian, classical literature and philosophy by himself, brain box or what. So unlike most rich women at that time, Florence was educated, opinionated and she was a bit of a ball breaker. In a world where men were in charge, that comes in handy, let me tell you. By the time our hero, serious, clever Florence Nightingale, was 30, the upper-class world where women looked pretty and got married was driving her crazy. She didn't want to be someone's wife. She turned down every proposal of marriage, much to her father's disappointment. Instead, she was sure she heard the voice of God calling on her to do some good in the world. Florence. Florence. Do some good. It was then that she decided her future was nursing. Nursing? Sick? Poor people? That's no work for a nice young lady, said her parents. She ignored them both and spent the next years investigating life in hospitals in London, Dublin and Paris. She became such an expert, she was soon given a job managing a hospital in Harley Street in London. In 1854, Britain, France and Turkey started a war with Russia called the Crimean War. Thousands of British soldiers were killed and injured. Florence Nightingale was asked to train up some nurses and take them out to the battlefield. That's a brave move when most women were doing embroidery and styling their hair. When they arrived, Florence and her team found soldiers dying, not from their wounds, but from the illnesses they contracted because of the unsanitary conditions, like no fresh air, open sewers, germ-ridden sick beds, not to mention exhausted doctors and poor medical care and horrible rotten food. In her methodical way, Florence started to record the death rate and her data showed that for every 1,000 injured men, 600 were dying because of a preventable disease. With her nurses, she scrubbed and cleaned. She provided medical care, clean water and fruit and veg. Word of her great work soon reached England and the Prime Minister, Lord Palmerston, and even Prince Albert and Queen Victoria were cheering her on. She became known as the Lady with the Lamp thanks to her evening rounds by candlelight. Public donations poured into her Nightingale Fund, and with the money, Florence set up the Nightingale Training School, which still exists today. She also wrote a book called Notes on Nursing, the first to be written on the subject, and it became a bestseller. She gave nursing a massive image makeover, and it became a well-regarded profession. But what was Florence like as a person? History has taught us to think of her as a gentle, sweet-tempered angel gliding around with a lamp. In fact, she was steely, a little bit ruthless, ambitious, and not especially caring or charitable. But she was a fantastic manager, and long before big tech, she was an awesome data geek. She analysed and presented information and numbers in a way that made you understand them better. Take her data visualisation design, which we still use today. It's like a pie chart, but with longer slices like this. After a long and packed life, Florence died at 90 in her bedroom in Mayfair. Everyone wanted to have her buried in Westminster Abbey. But her own unassuming and humble wish was to be laid to rest in a simple grave near her home. What a woman! Let's hear it for Florence Nightingale! Yeah!